Thank you for joining me in this quick demo of WordLift. In the next uh, 10 minutes, we will spend a little bit of time looking at our solution for WordPress. But before we start, WordLift really does one thing really, really well, and that is add structured data to your site. Now, when we talk about structured data, we usually talk about schema.org data. Schema is a library that has been agreed between the biggest search engines and uh, biggest organizations like Google, Microsoft, and so on. And it's a way of describing data. For instance, if I wanted to describe a person in schema.org, I know how to talk about their birth date, their birthplace, whether they got an award or what their address is. So with this out of the way, let's have a look at the WordPress uh, dashboard uh, and let's see what happens here once you install WordLift. Now we just installed it and we have, uh, we have an article here. We can have a look at it in the front end. We talk about Rome because WordLift was founded in, in Rome. And if we have a look at uh, the structured data tester, we can see that there's already some structured data added to this article. But it's very simple structured data. It says that this is an article. WordLift has recognized that automatically. It adds a short description of the article. It adds a connection to the person that has written this article. But that's it. There's nothing more. But we want much more from our structured data. And that's why we installed WordLift. So let's get back to the dashboard. Let's edit this post and let's see what happens behind the scenes. Now, WordLift is now working to recognize what this article is about and is proposing to us a number of concepts of places, of people, ideas, all sorts of different concepts that might describe this page. Our role as WordLift editors is to decide which one of these entities is really important and is really relevant to this page. So for instance, well, definitely this article talks about the Colosseum, talks about the Roman Forum, the Roman Emperor. It definitely talks about Rome. Uh, and uh, let's add the Roman people for good manners. So at this point, I just need to hit update and I can go back and I can test this article again and we will see some very different results. Now, it's still recognized as an article type, but at this point, I have a new entry, and that is this article is about a place, Rome. It is about, let's see what else, another place, the Roman Forum. This place is about another place, the Colosseum. And so I have added all of this information already to my page in just a few clicks. But this information is not just giving me a rough idea about the Colosseum. This is telling Google that this is one of the entities, one of the main concepts of this page is called Colosseum. And it is the Colosseum that Google already knows about because there is a link that says this is the same as this article on Dbpedia. And so there is no way that any search engine will mistake this Colosseum for any other Colosseum. And you might ask, is there any ambiguity about the Colosseum? Don't we just all agree that there is just one Colosseum? Well, Let's have a look here on Wikidata. Wikidata is one of the sources that WordLift uses, and it's one of the sources that search engines use when they want to know what is a concept, what kind of concept we're talking about. And here we can find Colosseum as an amphitheater, as a band, as a record label, and even in the form of a passenger train. Now, having structured data and adding structured data with WordLift allows you not only to disambiguate, but actually to corroborate, to reinforce the link between our article and this concept of Colosseum. And this concept of Colosseum is the same concept that Google already uses to spit out this page about the Colosseum, the one 
that has this uh, sort of snippet and that allows us to, to link to their web of data. Now let's have a look at some other things that have happened in the back end because you saw us just highlighting these but what is, uh, what is happening right now is that we are already creating a knowledge graph for our website. Now this knowledge graph will contain all of the things, the concepts, the ideas, the places, the people that we talk about on our site. And this is a great opportunity for us to uh, enrich the way that the web sees our site. You can think about your knowledge graph kind of as a sitemap for concepts. Okay? And so we manage this sitemap for concepts in the vocabulary section. And here in the vocabulary section, you can see that we have all of the entities that we were talking about. For instance, the Colosseum. Now we have this already in terms of data. So this data is already on the page. We can see it even in the form of a vocabulary entry about the Colosseum. And we can manipulate it even in WordPress in case we want to enrich it, we want to add images, we want to write a longer text, or even we want to classify the content with WordLift. Now, this on the front end, for instance, on our site, comes out in terms of a rich snippet. And so if I hover over user experience, I already get uh, a snippet, a featured image, and this is already a great way of adding information to your page. But there's something more that I want to uh, show you at this point. Now we were looking at this entity, the Colosseum. Let's, let's go back to this entity and maybe let's have a look at it uh, from, uh, from the front end. So let's, let's view it from here and let's go back to our validator tool. Now, if we go here, we will recognize one really important thing that not only this references a um, page on our website, but it actually references something, whatever that is, on this data.wordlift.io website. Now, this is something that only WordLift adds to your site. It creates a machine readable version of all the entities of your site, not just on your pages automatically, but automatically on this uh, data site. And so this is a further way that we actually reinforce the information that is coming from your page because we are telling Google, hey, you know that page that you know about that says Colosseum? Yeah, here is a machine readable version of it that you can further confirm that this is the actual Colosseum. We actually have it in Finnish, in uh, Lithuanian, in, in all different languages. This is what happens behind the scenes. This is how WordLift adds entities through these entities, creates a knowledge graph and through this knowledge graph pushes information to search engines that will then better recognize your content. Why is it so important for search engines to recognize your content? Well, search engines do a hard job. They match a search, search keyword, a search intent with some content. And if they understand your content better, they can match the right person searching for the right thing. So you don't just get more traffic, you get higher quality traffic, traffic that will stay on your page for longer and will convert more. But speaking of staying on your page for longer, maybe let's have a look at what happens on the front end of a website that is using WordLift. And let's go to the WordLift website for this. Now, for instance, we saw that we have the possibility of, uh, of having this uh, rich snippet. We have the possibility of linking to the vocabulary. This is by no means uh, something that you have to do, but in this case, we have pages uh, um, open on the, on the front end for the vocabulary, you have widgets and these widgets uh, allow you to understand what are the connections between the entities, what are the, the, uh, what is the, the view from the data point of view of your website. 
But also on the front end, we have some other powerful widgets, like for instance, the faceted search. Now this, for instance, allows me to find related articles to the one that I'm already reading, but they're only the ones that reference linked data. And this is another powerful way of browsing your website and searching for new information. So this is just a few of the ways that WordLift can help you create a, a better website and, and better content. I want to leave you with just one last top tip. Let's go back to the Entity Coliseum and let's have WordLift generate some content for us. And we can do that uh, if we scroll down and we uh, head to the excerpt uh, section and we can actually generate a, a short summary from the content that is already on the page and we can use this uh, as a short summary as a meta description we can use this on social media and this is just another powerful tool where you can see that we're bringing together artificial intelligence inside any tool that you're using right now to bring better workflows for having automatic AI augmented SEO. Thank you so much for watching. This was just scratching the surface. So be sure to book a demo with our experts.